Hello, our friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. Hello there. Welcome back. So we just took the guys out for a little sunshine. Actually, we got a lot of sunshine today. Uh, Sir Zeke is enjoying himself as his lady sassy. She's around the backside here. And, uh, you know, we were just talking about why Cindy was just saying, you know, why are they drawing this out so much if they know they're going to lose? Now we're talking about the controllers. Because ultimately they... They're going to lose control of the situation, so to speak. And why do they want to do everything that, you know, they can do to prolong things, so to speak, if, you know, we've equated it to the pen being opened and, you know, the flock can now go and be free. Right. And, you know, if ultimately we're moving up into a, a new Kali Yuga what's what's their point you know what's their end game and why do they have to ratchet it up if they know they're going to lose anyway well you know again we're going out of the kali yuga so kali is is dark and you know that's literally what it means is dark age and you know we're going to be heading on up you know you could view it as uh in many different ways but we're heading towards the satya Yuga, which is the golden age, which is going to take a while to get there. You know, we have to transverse, you know, on the way to the golden age, the silver, the bronze, and we could view that we're in the iron age right now. Uh, well, truly, we're one foot in, one foot out, so to speak, is what the guides have said. Well, again, what it's all about is, in their mindset, resources. And humanity is a resource to them. When you look at it, they're not working the minds here anymore, but humanity is, you know, just from that pure standpoint. How do we know how much gold, silver, precious gems, crystals, all sorts of natural resources, for that matter, how, how do we know how many uh, different forms of animal life, plant life, birds, fish, maybe don't even stay on planet? And we could put humans into that equation, too. Right, you know, and it's like this energy, this source energy that they collect, this energy can stay with them. They can keep this energy. This helps them sustain. Without this energy, they don't have what it takes for them to be as powerful as they are. So it's like a, a collecting phase. Yeah, and, and okay, what she is talking about now when she's talking about source energy, this is what the guides have said. They have said that, it's not just about the physical human body and having a physical, so to speak, uh, person here on the planet to actually work the planet for them so that they don't have to or when they can't because they're no longer uh, on the same density as we are right now. It's also about the God spark, the source spark, because each one of us have uh, a portion of source within us. And so that's the part that can't die. Yeah, the body is just a vehicle. We shed the body. We still are. Our consciousness still is. And, you know, as has been the norm, typically we build a body to transverse this this particular density that we find ourselves on, 3D. And then when we're sleeping, we're basically on 4D. And at some point in time, the body gets worn out. As the Bhagavad Gita says, worn out bodies are discarded by the user, just as worn out garments are discarded by the user. And again, we could equate our bodies um, being downgraded, so to speak, from what they originally were. And especially when it comes to consciousness, you got to wonder, why is there so much of the DNA that's quote unquote junk DNA, dormant DNA? dormant for a reason. It's because it's been turned off. It's not being fully utilized. And a lot of this DNA has to do with other perception of other densities. Now, the sun is sending us signals to turn on this dormant DNA, and it is turning on. This is why people are waking up and starting to realize, hey, you know, the pieces to this puzzle don't fit. The logic doesn't fit. Something feels way off. I don't buy it anymore. Right. And, you know, these times when the sun is doing what it's doing and it's been having a lot of information 
sent out and we are the ones, we're the receivers. As we sit and do our meditations and our mantras, we're allowing this energy to integrate into us. And this brings us a form of freedom. It brings us a new understanding in life. It brings in new perceptions, new uh, things that maybe we haven't thought of before. Or And when sometimes when we think of things in a different way or through a different lens, that can really change you. It can be life-changing. Absolutely. And to go along with that analogy that I was giving, so if they are able to control us when we shed the body by keeping us in the same density at, at the most as where they are, which is the lower fourth realm, the lower astral realm, so to speak, lower 4D, then they could still control us. And again, uh, if we make the ascension, we will find ourselves basically on 5D. If we just even keep our vibes really high throughout life, and then when we pass and drop the body, we find ourselves in middle 4D or upper 4D, we're still past where they are. And so they, they really can't control us. They can't hurt us back into another one of their pens. And when we say hurt us back into another one of their pens, I mean another planet that's under their control, so to speak. The people that don't make the ascension because they choose to go the route that the controllers want them to go, and they allow their vibrations to be lowered, they allow certain things to come into them and take them over, so to speak, over time, then then when the flash comes, the body won't be able to handle the flash. The body will will give it up, so to speak. It, it, will, it will not be able to handle the flash from the sun, which is really coming from uh, source when you really break it down. And so the body will disintegrate. The soul will be still basically stuck in, in lower 4D and will more than likely incarnate on another controller planet faced with the same situation that we find ourselves in now. So you're going to go from one Kali Yuga to another. Whereas if you avoid the controller's techniques, all the things that they're doing, um, and you don't allow them to lower your vibration and your frequency, it's just the opposite. You're going to go on up uh, to 5D and you're going to experience the 5D Earth. Right. And, you know, you got to ask yourself, well, what's lowering my vibration mean? What does that look like? Because we want to avoid that. And that's when you can get very angry or upset about things that you see on the news, on the media. If uh, you get offended really easy, even though, I mean, people should be offended if something is really, really wrong. But if you're easily offended, that's going to lower your vibration. And what we need to do is put ourselves in a space where we're always bettering ourselves, where we're always learning something new, where we're always uh, stretching, where we're always pushing ourselves, not in a negative, competitive way, but pushing ourselves into something new. And this is what helps raise our vibration. Absolutely. And so that makes that makes me think of something that our dear Mama Jan sent us. That's a little uh, Buddha with the slogan on it, you got to let that shit go. <laughs> <laughs> Thank Thanks, you, Mama, Mama Jan. Jan. <laughs> <laughs> but it's true. You got to let that go. You got to develop kind of a Buddhist detachment. Do you find yourself, if you're on the highway and somebody cuts you off, do you find yourself prone to going into a road rage, to feeling like you're ready to get out of the car and go pound that person or run them off, then you need to work on the vibes, if that's the case. You need to learn how to let this stuff go. We need to learn how to not be controlled by lower emotions. What's lower emotions? Anger, jealousy, hate, rage. All these things, you know, if you're an insanely jealous person that gets jealous over any little thing, you know, that's something that you need to work on. If, again, you know, you're always depressed. Why are you depressed? You have to take the time to go into your own soul and figure out why are you depressed? Why are you feeling down? Because again, these are lower vibrations. All these things are going to pull us down. What you want to cultivate is the feeling of loving gratitude. And yeah, it can be tough to cultivate gratitude in a scenario where, you know, you might be losing your home, you might be losing your job, you might not have any security. 
it's amazing when people can still have this beautiful feeling of gratitude. And this reminds me of a vision I had, which was of, it felt like it was very much uh, World War II, and it felt like it was occupied, uh, maybe Poland, maybe France. But there were these young men, I saw three young men that were rounded up and then about to be executed by firing squad. And they just started to break out into like a happy song. And they were just singing happily. And then they still gave the order and and they were executed. But something like that can, when you find yourself on the other side, lift you up and out. Right. And instead of you getting trapped into the lower uh, realms. Right. When, when you watch a lot of these medieval movies and you you ask yourself, well, they're doing these torture processes. Why are they torturing people? And what that's doing in such a literal sense, it's lowering one's vibration before they die. So it's sending them into an even worse space so these controllers understand consciousness to a degree that we do not and we have not been taught and that's why we're we're here trying to help people understand there's so much more going on around you than what you see in the 3d and that's continuous so once we find those understandings we can kind of shift the perception in our world and have new understandings and new beginnings So, you know, plain and simple, what they want to do is trap the soul and keep the soul with them. And that's done through constant warfare, conflict, and all these loosh-inducing horrible acts. This is their system. When you look to Guantanamo Bay and the type of things that they put people through, this is the draconian system at work. This is, you know, that construct that is all about keeping the soul bogged down. The nonstop blood sacrifice of war, for instance, that is totally, totally their, their <laughs> modus operandi, their, their method, and their madness, all wrapped up into one. Right, and that's what it is on a wider, broader scale, ha- having constant war. This kind of gives them an overall... Uh, system where they can keep people's vibes down but then also look at yourself in your individual life do they not keep us constantly having to work 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 until we're exhausted and say we don't get much sleep at night because we have to feed the kids we got to uh, clean the house and these things can wear the soul down over time and it would be such a blessing when we get to this time in our world where we can help each other, lift each other up, help each other become, uh, you know, masters at whatever we want to do by teaching each other certain things and just having that love and that harmony all around you. We could do so much with that kind of an attitude. Absolutely. You know, so it's all about rising above the system. This is why, you know, they, they might basically make a sacrifice of many that we would, you know, view as being up there at the top of the pyramid, but they're not really at the top of the pyramid at all. Because again, we don't see any on the top of the pyramid. And and the top of the pyramid is not even really on this 3D earth at the moment. Mm -hmm. So, you know, again, they will always sacrifice pawns, rooks, knights, bishops, even queens and even kings that are here on earth, in order to achieve their ultimate goal, which is basically controlling, keeping, capturing the soul. And that's the bottom line. So there again, you know, truly, this is a battle for our very souls. Right. They're very much uh, willing and able to step on one another to make their way to the top. And that's just not the kind of world that I want to live in. So I keep visualizing this world where people help each other, people you know, trust each other, people lean on each other, and by envisioning it, that's what we create. Absolutely. So as always, guys, thanks for your support on Ko-Fi and Patreon. I hope you find it informative and help clarify some things. Keep your vibes high. Much love. God bless and namaste. Namaste.